I teach things that my students don't like, and I'm okay with that. I know that there's this train of thought that um, students have to have a good time in order to be engaged with the material so that they're learning. And because of that train of thought, we sometimes avoid teaching certain forms, right? Well, here's the thing. I don't like beats, but I understand that they have some nutritional value. And because of that, uh, I try to think of attractive ways to include it into my diet so that I'm getting the benefits of the thing, even though I don't like the thing. Here's a nice little idea. What if we applied that in our teaching? Or actually, I apply it in my teaching because before me is a curriculum of different dance forms. And in my adult mind, I understand that all of these dance forms have value. That's why I chose them for the curriculum. But now I have to speak to the fear in my heart that will say, if the students don't like it, they're not going to be engaged and they're not going to learn anything. And I have to remind myself that sometimes it's about the way that we present the information that allows people to engage with it. There's this other thing that I have to remember and that I tell myself. Good time and engage are not synonymous. A student might not like something, but can still be engaged with it. This is an excellent opportunity to encourage them to be engaged with this. So what does that look like? If a student comes to me and says, I don't like X, Y, and Z, I'm not having a good time. Okay, tell me why you don't like it. Because in that telling me why they don't like it, it means they actually have to pull from some of the things. Compare this and that. What about this don't you like? What would you like more? You have to know in order to be able to speak to it. And that's a level of engagement. So our job as dance specialists is to find that entry point into the content. Right, And sometimes it might mean it's not their favorite thing, but that doesn't mean that they still can't learn from it. I once took a class to several football players um, and we got into the topic of ballet. Now, you can fill in some, some thoughts right there. In class, I actually showed them a documentary about um, the ballet dancer, Sergei Punin, and forgive me if I am butchering his name and they watched his workout regimen and hearing him speak about his being away from his family, the commitment and all of these things was actually a space where my athletes connected because they could, they too have experienced these intense workout regimens and having to be away from their families, right? So there was this place this entry point that I found in the delivery of the content. As a dance specialist, I teach dance forms that my students don't like, and that's okay because I look for ways to give them an entry point into that thing so that they are at least engaged with it. But you know, what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below and subscribe and follow for more. Take care. Wait, I forgot to say, if you're interested in more dance education tips, in the details, you'll find a link to my ebook titled Dancing Toward Mindfulness and Inclusivity, 10, my 10 best practices for your dance education classroom. Check it out. Let me know your thoughts and be amazing.